When you first start Game Salad, along the left you see a list of crea projects you can create. Some of them are based on templates and some of them are blank projects. In the center you see the projects you've recently been working on and on the right you see a list of items that you can read including tutorials and other kinds of interesting things to look at. There's also a link to Game Salad on YouTube where there are a lot of great video tutorials. We're going to start with a blank project here on the left. Click that and click Create. And now you get to name your project. Um, I went with LTB for Lions, Tigers, and Bears. And uh, we're going to go ahead with the basic landscape iPhone uh, without changing uh, much of anything at all. So looking around Game Salad, it doesn't look very complicated, but there's actually quite a lot in here, and it's all separated out into different screens. Every game that you create in games, Game Salad will happen in a scene. So click on this section here for scenes, and you'll see that we have an initial scene. Now, you may want to have a credits screen, you may want to have a game over screen, you may want to have a you win screen, so I'm going to call this game screen. In case we add some more later, we'll be able to tell them apart. We also have a tab for actors, and actors are the things that will be inside your game. If you want good guys or bad guys or backgrounds, so those will all be actors. Even the score is an actor. And then there's a thing for tables, which we'll not discuss in this, in this series. So we're going to go to scenes, and double click the one called game screen that you just made, and that should open your game screen. I like to make the window larger by using the plus sign here, uh, but before I do that, in the background here, I have a folder called LTB Resources, and this will be available uh, on, my, on my website for you to download. What you want to do is, where it says Images here, highlight these and drag and drop, and it's going to take images and say, yes, resize. Import this as a sound, import that as a sound, import that as a sound. And so we should see images on the Image tab. We have a, a lion and a tiger, and a bear, and a yellow brick road, and then four sounds, a sound for the teddy bear, a sound for the lion, a sound for the cat, uh, and a sound for uh, cartoon hop, which is actually a boing boing, well, I'll play it. That's if they do something bad. So we have behaviors, images, and sounds, which are down there in the bottom. Now that you've imported those, you can make this window larger so we can see more stuff. In Game Salad, at any time, you can click the play button at the top, and that will play a preview of your game. Right now we just have a black background. Use the back button to go back and make changes and then click again. So an actor, as I said, is something that's in your scene. And so um, I want to, to add an actor that is based on an image, which will be in my background. So I go down to Images and I drag my yellow brick road up here and now it has become an actor. I'm going to rename it so we can call it we call it background. In Game Salad, it's important that you name things so that you can refer to them later. Now, although we have added the background over here under actors, it's not actually on our scene yet. So you need to drag it out here into the scene. Ooh, it got very large. So you'll need to kind of pan around here and find a handlebar. Now, if you just grab the handlebar, you've probably experienced this before in something like PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. If you've inserted a, uh, a an image and you grab it by the wrong side, you can squish it and get it out of out of um, proportion. So hold on your Shift key while you drag this handlebar down, and that will actually help you scale it and keep the proportions correct. So I'm going to grab it a couple more times and just keep zooming it down. I guess if I was a nice guy, I would have given you a photo that was the right size, um, but yeah. I've been called worse than not a nice guy. Okay, so here we have the photo and it's it's scaled down some. We have different views that we can see. We have this, first of all, this outer gray area where um, it's actually outside the boundary of what you can see on the screen. If you wanted to park an actor out here just so that before they could come in, kind of like in, in theater, they, they hide in the wings. This would be that kind of area. And then there is this outer border around the black area, that's the border of what you can see on your screen on the iPhone or iPad, then in this case it's an iPhone. And then in this inner area is something to do uh, later with the scrolling game. So if you're doing like Mario Brothers and you want to have the camera follow Mario, the camera will follow Mario as long as he's within these borders and when he reaches that end it's going to start scrolling. So we want to put 
our wallpaper back here so that there is nothing past this line that we won't cut off. And I think that's good enough for me. I'm going to hit the preview button and see what that looks like in terms of a real game. It looks good to me. If you wanted to resize it some more, you could use the back button. You could use your shift key and grab the handles and resize it any amount that you wanted to. I'm fine with that. We'll move forward. So now um, we could add an actor another way. We can add an actor by using the plus sign to add an actor. And this actor, if you were to drag it in here, would just be a white box because we didn't give it any properties. Another way that you can change the image of an actor is to drag the image on the actor. So I can make that actor look like a lion, or I can change it to a teddy bear, or back to a lion. So now, having added that, then I could drag that onto my screen. And that's way, way, way too big. So rather than changing it here, I'll show you how to change things about actors by changing their attributes. So if you double click an actor, we can go look at all the things we know about that actor. And those are called attributes. We see that its name is actor one. I'm gonna change its name from actor one to lion. Again, it's important in game salad that you name things uh, in, in a reasonable fashion so that you can refer to them later. Uh, notice there's a triangle beside size. I can open that triangle up and make changes to this. Now I'm gonna make the size of this 64 by 64. And uh, at some point in the future, we'll talk about why numbers which are powers of two are better for games than other numbers. But if you choose a number that is an even, just a, a straight power of two, like uh, 32, 64, 128, those numbers will be much easier to um, calculate by the computer and your game runs faster. So I've changed the size of this thing to 64. Um, it's got a name, it's a lion. We've, we've set everything that we need to. So now if I just use my back arrow, and drag that line onto my scene, it's a much more reasonable size. You can click your play button, and um, nothing, if I click, if I click, it doesn't do anything. But we can change that pretty easily. Let's talk about behaviors. Double click your lion, and you'll see this screen. Now, if you, instead of double clicking the line on the left, if you double click the line on the right, you got a lock screen. And let's talk about the difference between double clicking this lion, which is on our scene already, and this lion, which is over here in our attributes and, and in our well, it's in our actors area. This is called a prototype actor. A prototype actor is one that I can make many copies of, and every one of them will be exactly the same. I could put as many of these lions out here as possible. The moment that I drag them from over here into our scene, each one becomes an instance. And so then I could resize them and they could all have different sizes and different shapes and different colors. And I could say, ah, uh, this one, I'm gonna click the lock and I'm gonna change it. And I'm gonna change its color to something wild and crazy like that. And then when I'm done changing its color, I can go back and see that I was able to change its color. So if you want to get rid of something, highlight it and delete it with your delete key on the keyboard probably don't want to delete my background. There we go. So I want to change the lion prototype so that any further lions that are created have the same things about them. So double click your lion prototype and we're going to talk about behaviors. So if you click down below instead of images we go to behaviors there are all these things that we can make happen and they're based on rules. So using two fingers on that MacBook um, trackpad, scroll up and down and find the word rule. We're going to drag a rule over here where it says drag your behaviors here. And this rule says when the actor receives a touch, we're going to do something. And that thing we're going to do is to play a sound. So find play sound and drag that over here where it says drag your behaviors here. So if you look at this box, the enclosing box says there's a rule when all the conditions are met, when the actor receives a touch, then we're going to play a sound. The sound we're going to play is the lion sound. So let's preview that. We have no lion because I deleted our lion. If we go back, we go back here. We can drag up lion from our prototype, put it in our scene and press play. Now, 
when I tap my lion, I get a sound. If I tap outside the lion, I don't get a sound. But if I tap the lion, I do. And our lion is technically a rectangle, so if I tap kind of in the corner of the lion, I still get a sound. Uh, Game Salad doesn't know where the boundaries are of, of the, 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 the graphic itself, so it's actually going on a rectangle. And you can experiment with that yourself and find out where those boundaries live by clicking closer and closer to the lion. So the only thing we have left is to get this lion moving once a second. And so my lion is moving randomly around the screen within the boundaries of the size of the screen. So what, what does this coordinate system look like? We're going to stop here and take a bit of a sidetrack into something um, that I call up, down, left, right. And once we get our ups, downs, lefts, and rights figured out, then we're going to come back, pick up, and make the lion move.